morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is uh, Alan Martinez, um, and the family is close to our family. Uh, Papam is actually my, my good buddy. He's my fellow Pogi. <laughs> so, uh, because he knows how to appreciate Pogi, so I bring you to He likes money. But the money that he likes is not for himself, it's not only for the church that he built, now he built up in Agaga. And so, um, as we remember him, um, his life and his legacy um, we live as we continue to support the church that is close to his heart in Agaga. And um, Papa has a lot of stories. She can, he can tell stories from the time he was born. And he will always continue it up to the present. And uh, it's amazing to hear, to hear um, his stories because these are the events uh, in his life that is um, close to his heart. And every time he will say something, about what happened to him, you could see that he has this close relationship and faithfulness. He has a close relationship with his father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You could see that his life has been guided by the Lord. Each and every step, even the hardships that he would like to um, explain, to tell. Papa has a lot of stories. He's proud of his accomplishments and everything that he has gone through. And one story that really stands out for me is this. He said that when his children were growing up, uh, they bought a family. They lived in a small home. Um, so all the kids would sleep in one room. I think there were eight, eight of you, eight of them, one small room. And he would say that every night, when all of them are asleep, um, when it was late, he would stand at the door of the room where the children were sleeping, and he would raise his hands, and he would bless and pray for each and every child. And he's so proud of that. We can now see the result of, of uh, his praying for, for the kids. The, uh, in, the value plan is now an outstanding God-loving family. What an awesome example that all of us fathers can follow. As Father's Day approaches, I would like to challenge each and every father to do what Papa has been doing. Pray for your children. Bless them. Lift them up to the Lord. If we do this, we can rely on God's protection and guidance upon our children. And a lot of times, that is all really that we can do. Uh, my little boy Gabriel uh, observed that every time Papang has been like walking around here in church, you would hear him say, Breathe! <laughs> so I'd like to request everybody, let's, let's do that. Let's breathe. Breathe! Amen. So thank you for joining us today. Good morning. My name 
Miss Mina Agustin Sapor, Mrs. Sapor. I've known Papang uh, long before I got to know Ate Elisa. Uh, I've known Papang because I am a military uh, child. Um, uh, as you all know, oh, as some of you may know, Papang is uh, in the Army, serving the Army, and my father served in the Air Force. So we got to meet. Uh, the, div the division of the camp is just a bridge. So the Army and the Air Force. So we get to meet um, every now and then um, as a member and officer of the organization of uh, Christian camps, Christian youth camps in the Philippines. That's where I got to know uh, Emya, Ate Emya and Esther as well. And back then, I've seen Papang how he manages to be a soldier and to be a pastor and to be a father and to be a friend to us young people at that time. Um, then when I came in the country, in the US, I've seen how he also had uh, become a, a great father, a great example to a lot of ICF members, a lot of ICF fathers. My father and Papang are good friends, although my father is younger. Uh, they are good friends, and I've seen in them the camaraderie of a soldier and at the same, same time Christian brothers. And uh, I see that uh, he really enjoyed life with his smile, with his comments. And um, it got to be uh, a joke when there's fellowshipping in our homes or, or other people's home when Papang is asked to pray. Uh, as, you, as those who have witnessed him pray, he prays long. <laughs> and uh, don't ask him to pray when it's uh, meal time because you will get hungry. <laughs> so, uh, but that's one thing that had instilled in my heart and in my mind that Papang loves the Lord. Papang loves to pray. And Papang lived a long life. So I came to the conclusion, and I would like to challenge you as well, to pray long so you will live long. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's good to be back to my home church. <laughs> yeah, we moved to Trenton, and it's almost two hours from here. And there was a bit of an emergency on part of my husband, Manong Gas. So that's my excuse for come, having come late. <laughs> Waking up at 5 o'clock was not enough, but glory to God. Glory to God for the life of Papang. Um, we got to know Papang uh, just before we started joining the uh, Orangeburg Bible Study Family Group at uh, the house of Roly and Elisa. And he was always good company. Every time you look at his face, you see the face of a godly man. A man who truly loved the Lord with all his heart, his mind, his soul, his everything. He was such a role model for everyone, um, crossing generations. The small ones, the parents, the grandparents. What an example, what a blessing to have known Papang. And so when I was asked um, if you can say a few words about Papang, I said, wow, when you want to give it your best to honor him, 
you are at a loss for words. I don't have enough words to describe him, but I said, okay, Hill, G-I-L, God is love. That is exactly what he projected. He was full of love for everyone. He crossed the borders as far as love was concerned. Indeed, love conquers all. And so I remember, like uh, Mina said, <laughs> don't ask him to pray when it's time to eat. <laughs> and, uh, but actually, it's true. It showed how Jesus was indeed his friend. Like my husband also says, you pray too long. I said, when you consider Jesus as your friend, you know, like there's no parting. There's no time borders um, involved. You just have to express everything. And, uh, and I noticed that um, he always had something pleasant. His thoughts were all, always pleasant thoughts. And uh, you, uh, from whatever conversation you have with him, you leave, he leaves you with a good feeling. And uh, he used to talk a lot, but as, the, as his illness progressed, I noticed he spoke less. But having known him from before, you know, his thoughts are full of God. And so I'm so thankful for having, for, like I said, for the blessing of having known such a man. Thank you.